I'll look at you when I get to the end.
Good morning and welcome to Church of the Resurrection. I'm Liz Titchener and I'm delighted to be with you all this morning and in particular to have uh, some extra musicians among us to uh, remind us to give thanks for the blue skies when we see them, especially right now. Everything that you need to join in our worship is in the bulletin. It's a PDF available on our website. Uh, you can find it. I'm sure some of it will drop it in the comments again soon, or you can scroll up on the Facebook page for that. We'll center ourselves for worship with uh, the call to prayer, our bell. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to, to God, God forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, glory.
God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join me in reading from Psalm 105. We will read responsively by whole verse. I'll begin with the odd, and I invite you to read the even verses. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. 
sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned, so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Peter was so close. Last week, he named with clarity who Jesus was, how he had encountered him as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus was so encouraging, giving Peter those proverbial keys of the kingdom, pointing to his witness as the very foundation of the sacred community. And now it just got real, and Peter is deeply troubled. Jesus has turned his face towards Jerusalem, and he seems to know that this way is only going to gather speed, moving faster and faster towards a terrible end. He tells the disciples as much. He's intent on preparing them for what's coming and for the new life that will unfold after that apparent end. Faced with this information, this this sudden crossroads, Peter has a choice to make. And he thinks this is absurd. I can see him yanking Jesus by the arm, pulling him away from the group, getting up in his face and just lighting into him. Why would Jesus get himself killed? Not on Peter's watch. There has to be a way out. And maybe there is. Jesus could go into hiding. He could flee. He could assume a low profile and let the dust settle. Except that He isn't willing to stop loving, stop healing people, stop proclaiming this reconciling grace of God. The good news is that urgent. He recognizes that forcing those who are living in destitution to wait and apathetically letting the powerful continue to determine the status quo, he recognizes that these are primary ways of confirming oppression. 
And Jesus is not going to back off on loving the world, loving the world fully and completely, even if it scares the people in power so much that they kill him. Path A and path B are laid out plainly for the disciples to consider. What do we do when we arrive at one of these critical turning points? When we come to a cross like this, which way do we go? Like Peter, I understand the temptation to jump in and try to control the way forward. I want my people to be protected. I don't want their hearts broken or their hopes dashed. I want to I rein it all in and limit the risk. And when I notice this pull in myself, my mind returns to a small community that I've spent time in. At another point in my life, I was part of this little group that met for prayer and for reflection. We spanned generations and perspectives and theologies, and we regularly came together in this tiny little chapel with our chairs in a circle. It was as simple a gathering as it was robust. We began by reading aloud about the saint of that day, following the, the calendar of the saints. And after finishing the story of this particular holy person, modern or ancient, the leader would ask, so what did you hear today? And often, what we had heard was stunning and also perplexing and frightening. How could that person have been so selfless, so visionary? How could Jonathan Daniels, who took off from seminary to work in voter registration drives in Alabama, how could he have decided in an instant to push a teenage girl out of the way and take a bullet himself? How did Claire and Francis reject their wealth and their ease, choosing instead the, the hardship and the wonder of life in community and with all of creation? How did Samuel Shereshevsky persevere at the end of his life, translating the scriptures into Mandarin, even through chronic illness and paralysis, ultimately typing the whole of his translation with just two fingers? How did the four chaplains of the SS Dorchester give up their lifeboat to other sailors and then sing their way down into the dark, cold sea? When they came to that critical point, how did each of these saints choose that way? As we sat with these stories, these big questions were usually followed by a quieter one, a wondering filled with trepidation and hope. What would I have done there? Who would I have been on that day? Many times, I think the answer is that we are Peter as he wrestles with discipleship. We flail, we, we grasp for certainty, we try to direct the narrative in a safer, cleaner way. It's a response that is rooted in love, even as it ultimately hems in this greater love. And Jesus is clear that, that Peter's choices, even just Peter's words, matter. Just as Peter's insight into the identity of Jesus was sufficient for Jesus to rename him as the rock, his words, his stance in the world, 
are also enough to pose a threat to Jesus and to the kingdom he is trying to bring forth. Peter hasn't even taken real action to stop Jesus, but even his words are potent enough that they could be a stumbling block. His perspective is so powerful that Jesus calls him out as Satan, as the tempter. Maybe it's harsh. It's also stunning that a disciple's words and actions could matter that much. Every day we come, in varying degrees, we come to these crosses. Crosses that we may choose to bear, yes, but also these crossing paths, these moments where we choose one way forward or another. I see that point of intersection in our symbol, in the cross, together with that image of the tool of the crucifixion. When we come to the cross, how will we respond? If our words and our actions do make an impact on the people and the world around us, how will we discern? My hope for these times of the cross, it lies in reflection and in practice. There are so many ways to reach for this, ways to try to learn how to respond with bold love. And one place that it has happened for me has been gathered with other seekers, pouring over these stories of actual people, examining how they chose, how they responded, considering our own lives then layered on theirs, and then reaching and praying and wondering about how we might join them. At its core, I I think the work of the saints is about letting go of the false need to control, to lend our energy and our presence to building up this boundless love instead. That, I think, is what Jesus wanted from Peter. Jesus didn't need Peter's protection. Jesus just needed his friend's presence, his readiness to walk with him, to stay with the group and and continue with Jesus even beyond this crossroads. And that is easier said than done. When we come to that cross, when we're faced with what seems like an impossible decision, it is so very tempting to grab hold of the design, manipulating the plan to match our vision, learning how to live out this courageous love on our own, it's too tall an order. This is why we have the examples of all these remarkable holy people, these saints who have gone before us who wrestled with these same questions. We can live like them by living with them, surrounding ourselves with their stories, carrying their questions with us, reaching to practice their bold and faithful responses. Over the years with that group of mine, I found that that simply by steeping myself in their stories, the, the saints began to change me and shape me. As I took in their witness season after season, I found that They had each been giving of themselves into this well of courage, a well I could draw from when I found myself stumbling, when I needed more heart, more grounding, more hope. We were never meant to follow this living God on our own, to pick up this cross and plunge headlong into the risk alone. And here is the good news. We learn and discern, we act and respond, all from within this great cloud of witnesses. The faithful who already began the work of building God's realm long before any of us arrived. When we come to the cross, when it is our turn 
to decide who we will be and how we will respond, remember that we are surrounded, that we are held by this multitude of holy witnesses.
Together, let, our, let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy One of blessing, rock beneath our feet, we turn our hearts to you. We pray for the church, your body and the world that all who walk this path may be grounded in your compassion. We open our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for all who hold and seek authority in this nation, that they may guide us to prioritize the common good and reach for reconciliation among all people. We open our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for the wonder of creation, that we may have the wisdom and strength to set aside privilege, greed and fear, and work for your justice throughout the world. We open our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for this gathering that we may be bold in our care for friend and stranger. We pray especially for Phil, Mary, and Tyler, Ken, Debbie, Kelly and Joe, Dick and Janice, Gary, Sarah, Phoebe, Matthew and David, members of our parish family. Help us to hear your call and see you at work in this community. We open our hearts. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. We pray for those who are sick, scared, or suffering especially those on our parish prayer list, and all those suffering from or affected by COVID-19, the wildfires, and Hurricane Laura. We open our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for those who have died. Alice Keller, Jane McClary, Desmond Rutherford, Nikolai Seleverstoff, and those we now name, that they may be welcomed into the great cloud of witnesses. We pray that in time we may also come to feast at your welcome table. We open our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. And praying together, nurturing God, God. Your, your love, love is, is free. free. Your, your compassion, compassion unconditional, unconditional, and your mercy infinite. infinite. You, you shower, shower upon us gifts, gifts in abundance. abundance. 
Grant that we may know and trust these gifts, that we may discover the joy they bring and be inspired to serve and love out of that joy. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against, against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, Forgive, restore, restore and, and strengthen, strengthen us through our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ that, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace, peace. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received.
All things come of you, O oh God. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our thanks, thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we shout, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. yours creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, you we, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, you and, and we, we pray, pray to you, Lord our God. God. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us, gather us with blessed Mary, the God-bearer, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen.
as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And let us pray together. In union, union o Lord, Lord with, with your, your faithful people who long to gather at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist has been celebrated, and we pray will be celebrated again soon. We desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and the life to come. Amen. Right. If, uh, if you have a birthday or an anniversary, some other moment of grace or thanksgiving you would like to offer up to God, now is the time to type those into the comments, and we'll lift those up here in a, a couple minutes. A number of things that I want to share with you today about our common life. First, uh, just a great big thank you to our wonderful, extra special musicians today. We've got Alex on drums and Ben on guitar and Rob jumping back and forth between the soundboard and the saxophone. It's just a joy. Thank you, Colleen. Listen, I'm oh, hold, hold. I'm gonna get emotional because these are kind of like my kids. <laughs> you might have to say that again. Is she up? Okay, now you can go. Uh, I'm especially grateful today because these, are, these guys are kind of like my kids. I've gotten to know them as they've grown 
both as young men and musicians. And they are both, I, we're, I feel very grateful, especially because this came together at the last minute, right before there are, well, at least Ben is heading out to college this week and Alex a few weeks later. So this yeah. is super special on that front. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, a number of things that I want to share with you this morning. The first is uh, heavy news. Uh, it's been heavy on my heart. You may have read this in the ministry news yesterday, but this past week uh, I had to make the just really difficult decision not to reopen our, pe our preschool, Peter Pan Preschool. Um, in short, you, you can read more about it, but in short, uh, the enrollment dropped really significantly at the last minute and the best efforts to um, bring our student body there up to a level that would be sustainable, it, it just wasn't possible. Um, and so given the health risks involved, even following all the guidelines together with not actually being able to say sustain the school, um, we made this decision to wait to reopen. Uh, we don't know how long it will be, uh, probably not this year, that seems fair to say, but I'm really grateful to Diana, our director, and to the teachers who worked so incredibly hard this summer to learn all of these new regulations and change the school all around to meet them, and they've done that work with such heart, and so it is hard and sad to not be able to see the fruits of that work. I'm also really grateful to our vestry who uh, were able to all show up and give themselves really generously to an emergency vestry meeting to consider all the possible options before us as I made this decision. So please join me in praying for Diana and for our teachers and for the families who had hoped to send their children here this fall. Um, there, there are rarely easy decisions in a pandemic um, and I, I wish only good things for all those for whom this, this decision has, has real impact. So please hold them all close and uh, as things unfold down the line, we will, we will work together to see what we can do with this ministry in a new season. A couple other things coming up. Uh, one is uh, today is the last day to make your interest known to join the Sacred Ground uh, dialogue series. It's a readings and film based series in small circles of, of 10 or fewer. It'll be on Zoom working with uh, issues of race and faith and unpacking those together. We're hoping those are going to start in September, and so there's a, a Google form you can find in the ministry news. If you have any questions, let me know, but uh, we need to find out uh, really, truly who all is interested today so that we can work on configuring those circles. Uh, and finally, things are going to be a little unusual at church for the next six to eight weeks uh, as the big re-roofing project of the sanctuary begins tomorrow. So what you can't see, maybe, uh, Ken, you want to flip the, <laughs> the camera um, to show what is happening here, that it's empty? He's listening to the live stream, so he's a, a little bit behind. The, the sanctuary is empty. Uh, if you come to see uh, about picking some figs which are ripe or some apples which are ripe, just be really careful. Uh, the workers will be here during the day and um, just be mindful of that. But it's really exciting and uh, hopefully we'll do good work in preserving this building for many, many uh, years, decades to come. I think that is it for now. Colleen, was there anything else you wanted? Okay. All right. Um, Thanksgiving again for the wonderful, wonderful music this morning. For Rich Gianello, who is 70 on Saturday. Um, for our eight o'clocker friend, David Turner and his family. Uh, his wife, Tariko, passed away last week in Oregon. But they moved recently. Um, for Robert Deem's birthday as well. For Lisa's job, her new job that begins at the end of September. Fantastic. Um, and for these college-going musicians, for the preschool teachers, yes. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for those who share their art so freely with the world, for 
musicians, for these particular musicians as they set forth, for teachers, for our preschool teachers who share their love and their creativity with everyone they encounter, for this next chapter of their lives, whatever it may hold. We pray for Rich and for Robert as they celebrate a new year of life. And for all those living with uncertainty, for those living through loss for their families, for David and to Rico, for those looking for light and for hope in the midst of hurricanes and fires, for all those caring for them, for new chapters, for the joy of vocation and for leading that way. In your holy name we pray. Amen. fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Amen. and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God.